Homestead. So today we are heading out, me and my oldest son Joshua, we are going to be going on a canoe overnight canoe trip. It's on the Buffalo River and we're going to be putting in at tomorrow morning early. So we're going to head out now so we can wake up and be right there early in the morning where we're going to be putting in. And then we'll be stopping at night or in the afternoon for a camp campsite with some other friends of ours. And at that point, we're going to get started on the next morning uh, to finish the trip, the next, the next day on the canoe trip. So we're going to take you along with us. Hopefully, it's, it's, the water is going to be cold because it's, it's uh, late March, early April that we're doing this trip. It's the last day of March, first day of April that we're going to be doing the trip. So it, the water will be cold. Hopefully, here you can see Joshua, there we go. Hopefully, he doesn't tip over the canoe. <laughs> Hopefully, he doesn't tip over the I'm canoe. I'm going to tip it over. I'm not clumsy. So... And not only that, but I'm going to have my phone with me. I have a spare phone that I'm going to be recording with. So um, I'm not bringing any expensive camera equipment. And hopefully we don't take a drink, take a dump, take a, take a dump. That's not right. Take a drink, take a, take a dip, whatever. <laughs> hopefully we don't do that. So uh, come along with us. We'll take you along for the ride and show you the kind of fun we're going to have. Okay, so we're almost there. We're going to be there in a few minutes. And it's like 46 degrees outside it's starting to slightly drizzle a little bit so um, it's gonna be interesting to see how again the biggest concern for us is don't turn over the canoe in the water <laughs> it's gonna be cold but um, it'll be good it'll be fun it's only for a day whatever happens even if it's a disaster we can handle it for a day right maybe maybe Okay, so we'll see. You having fun so far? Mm -hmm. What are you eating? Trail mix. So we've had a pretty uneventful trip so far. We got about, we're past the halfway point. I think we have like an hour left to go down river that way. And we'll be at the halfway point where we're gonna spend the night tonight. So this is a gar that someone found on the bank. Look at those teeth. Old dead gar. Look at those teeth. That's insane. That's crazy. I'm really liking it out here. This is a fun time. If you ever uh, get a chance to go do a float trip in the Ozarks, Buffalo River, it's a pretty nice river. One of the best parts about these float trips is all the scenery. Look at this place we're coming into now. Just amazing rock formations. I'm inside this like cavern. I can almost touch the ceiling. I'm floating underneath it. The water goes way back there. That is pretty neat. I can totally, it looks pretty deep back there too, actually, that the water does. It was pretty far back there. It, pretty, it looks pretty deep too. You know, one of the things I like most about this trip so far is the upper body workout and core workout that I'm getting. It's like totally your core, your abs, you know, not so much your arms, but you're definitely your chest and your shoulders and uh, definitely your core and your abs. My abs are gonna be sore tomorrow, but. It's a good workout. It's one of the best parts I like about this so far. I'm gonna use my K9 pocket filter that I keep in my rucksack, my backpack, my camping backpack. I didn't bring any water on this trip because it weighs too much. So you go to where you're going and you get water and you fill up a bladder like this. And that way you just keep it with you. Whenever you need water, you don't have to haul water. It's that simple. 
and because you have a filter you can make as much water as you want when you need it especially when you're on the water like this on a canoe trip what I'm gonna do I've already primed this I stick this inside the water bladder like this like that and it's gonna pump it in Okay, so once I've got this bag filled up, you know, to the level I want, which is about right there, I'm going to go ahead and just fold this over and latch it down, and that'll be my water jug for the day. Hello homesteaders, so we arrived at our camp last night and made up camp and there's the river behind me this morning. It was cold last night, probably got down to 29, 28 degrees. We're primitive camping out here. Uh, a few people brought heaters for their tents. <laughs> we did not. Um, uh, my oldest son Joshua brought his uh, sleeping bag, at which point he discovered last night in the middle of the night that it was not warm enough. So <laughs> next time we'll bring a different bag. <laughs> I didn't even see what grab he, what bag he grabbed as we packed up uh, for the trip, but obviously it was not a cold winter weather bag. But um, anyway, we are out here this morning. It's a beautiful morning. It just looks great out here. I love primitive camping and I love um, going out to places like this and spending time with your kids is absolutely important. You're going to get out of your kids what you put into them, and I totally believe that. And uh, so it's important to spend time with them and spend time with friends. They can spend time with friends, too, and get these experiences. So this morning, or last yesterday, there was a teenager who was here amongst the group. And the teenager, he said, he saw my e-tool, and he said, so what did you bring an e-tool for? I said, why are you asking? <laughs> you don't know? How to use an e-tool and he said oh no i know how to use an e-tool i said no 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 you don't you don't know how to use an e-tool and so i showed him i'm sitting on it right now <clears throat> if you know why you bring an e-tool primitive camping please leave a comment below <laughs> and let me just say the e-tool was cold this morning <laughs> so the sun's coming up over the hill just now and uh, if you can see just coming up over the hill and priority number one at this point is to go make coffee and uh, get, uh, get a little bit warm, start getting stuff packed up. We, ha we have another 12 or 13 miles left to go on this, on this canoe trip. So it's going to take the better part of the day to get finished with it. We have to be done by 5 o'clock, I think is what, the, what they told us. So I'm sure we'll be done way before then, but still got a good you know trek or canoe trip still ahead of us. So we're going to get packed up and ready to go. We've had a good time out here. A lot of fun. I haven't caught any fish. <laughs> no fish. I just can't believe that. Um, usually I catch some perch, some sunfish or something, but I haven't caught anything. And no one else has really caught anything that's been... They, they've caught some other people who've caught fish, but nothing really good to speak of. Like nothing too impressive. But overall, we've had a good trip. And uh, now we're just going to finish it up and continue the fun. So one of the things we're doing as we're going down this river, having done this a number of times before in the past, is make sure everything is attached to the canoe. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So my main rucksack Alice pack right here is connected on this side to the bar of the canoe and on this side to the bar of the canoe. If the, the canoe does turn over, if we capsize in some fashion, this is going to stay put for the most part. Same with this one, um, the belly band is wrapped around the bar. Same with this pack here, which has got some food supplies and some other stuff in it. Uh, this has uh, its cord or its uh, strap wrapped around the bar. And those are the major things. The other things like the camp chairs I have here, they're not, but I'm okay with that. And then we have a coat and just some other small items and our trash bag we have back here too. They make every canoe carry a trash bag. So everything else that's major is connected to the, to the canoe. So if there is a capsize, you have the way to <laughs> not have to worry about retrieving everything downriver. 
Uh, hopefully everything that's important will stay right here. You can right size your boat as quickly as possible and everything important will be inside of it. I think what we have coming up here is the remains of an old bridge that used to be here. Um, so I think there was a road that went from here to here and then the bridge is basically destroyed. Who knows whether destroyed it or time, who knows. But it looks like a bridge used to be there. Yeah, back in the woods there you can see another pylon behind that tree. Or that was part of the bridge at one time. May have, may have been an old railroad bridge, who knows. Look at those big cliffs up there. The camera doesn't do it justice, but that is really tall. What? It's really high up there. Wind got blowing pretty good, so I had to turn my cap around so I don't lose my hat. Yeah. So we stopped at this piece of driftwood, and Joshua is putting his initials. Gerb. Gerb. So he's carved that in there. And I went ahead and carved a Z. A Z. I'm sure this driftwood won't be here next year. But maybe. Look how pretty it is. How's the dog doing? Pretty. <laughs> he's doing fantastic. Fantastic. You almost done? Yeah, I got, I got one done. You get it done? Yeah, because this will be here next, next year, you know. <laughs> Did you get finished? You all done? Yeah. All right, we're shoving off. Shoving off. Goodbye, piece of log. I'm sure you'll be here next year, if not. Do you remember where this log was? No. <laughs> okay, so we're headed back downstream. If we can turn ourselves around here. If you can see the ground below the water, it's not that deep here. Some places it's really shallow, some places it's really deep. But either way, it's beautiful scenery and we're having a good time out here. Wish you guys were out here. Leave us a like and... Be sure to leave a comment to let me know if you know what that e-tool is used for. Yeah. <laughs> I should have met earlier. <laughs> Joshua, did you use the e-tool while you were out today this year? Once. This, once? Yeah. <sighs> uh, okay. Signing off from the Buffalo River. Hit that like button. I really appreciate that. It really helps Google and YouTube know that people will watch our channel. And also our Teespring shirts are down, linked in the, in the description below. You can check out some of those, including the very popular one, Stupid Should Hurt, because really we don't have enough hurt in this world of stupid right now. Also, you know, uh, subscribe. Hope we can earn your subscription. You know, there's lots of great videos coming. we got some gardening videos coming up this spring, so you don't want to miss out on those. All right, guys. See you next time in the homestead. Bye. Hey guys, I'm happy to introduce an American homestead sponsor, Zervita Zeal. Now, first off, I only accept sponsors from products that I use and believe in. My family uses Zeal mainly because we want to ensure a healthy immune system. You see, it's made up of only whole food concentrates and includes no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. The included sweetener is all natural from fruit and the stevia leaf. It's gluten-free, it's vegan, and it's kosher. In 2018, my youngest son was involved in a bike accident that resulted in the surgical removal of his spleen, and that's an important part of his immune system. And because we live on a farm, you can guess that having a healthy immune system for our family is very important. Some of the included ingredients are beetroot, chicory root, turmeric, moringa, blueberries, cranberry, goji berry, milk thistle, ginseng, alfalfa, broccoli, and so much more. It's these natural ingredients that can easily be made into a powerful and tasty drink that my family can make and feel good about. 
So sign up and give it a try today. Every purchase you make goes to help the homestead so that we can continue to make great homesteading videos for you. Link is in the description below. Go ahead, give it a try. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>